Hello, welcome to my channel. I am so glad you are here. So this is part three of working on an acrylic still life. So there's two videos ahead of this one and I will work on linking those into the description if you wanna go back. And then um, I intend to make a, a playlist. So if you were here the last time, I hope you can notice just a little bit of a difference. And what I did, and I'm going to just keep going with what I'm doing because I got a head start because I just felt like it would just be so boring maybe to watch what I'm doing. But I had the walls that are, I had changed from kind of a, I don't know, a crazy wood grain look uh, to this kind of a mauve -y, Oh, what would you say? Kind of a khaki color, kind of a, I don't taupe, but it's got a bit of a, I don't know, it's got a bit of a mauve feel for me. And so the tablecloth was, was kind of a khaki color. And then I put the pink stripes on top. And then I did the gray curtains. And it all just seemed like especially this tablecloth, which is supposed to be up front, was just lost. It was just, just not there. So I started wanting to kind of punch up this tablecloth by filling in all the little boxes between the stripes, which are in a, like a box pattern. And I started filling them in. So I got a head start before you got here. I hope you're well. Um, because I just didn't want to put you through watching me fill in all these boxes. However, I want you to be a part of the process. So I just wanted you to see me do some of it. But that's what I've been doing is working on this. And what happened was, just like I recommend to you, the things I recommend are things that I honestly try to do. And that is, uh, this time, walk away. Sometimes your eyes just get filled with the process and the colors you're using. And you will be so surprised at what you see. And I'm just, just dipping the tip in the water. And I'm just, I've got the same blue that I had used in the mug, which I thought gave it such a cool punch that I picked that same blue. Okay, and I'm calling it phthalo blue, but I know that the tube says something a little bit different. And it's called phthalo cayenne blue. And then it says green shade. So that's the Liquitex Professional that I'm using. And that's the color. And I put it on the mug and now I'm putting it on the tablecloth. I figured, well, if she liked that color when she bought that mug then she might have bought a tablecloth that color too, right? So, and again, I I don't want to have such a broad palette. I think that if you can kind of limit your palette and then create some mixes from that palette, I think you just get an overall better harmony. Now, that's, ju that's Julie talking. Um, this is not, you know, some scientific study, but it's just the way I feel when I am creating. So I added a couple products that I'm going to show you in a minute. They're uh, Liquitex Professional Gesso and then some clear, well, it's always clear. It is a uh, medium, matte medium. Now, not gel matte medium. This is just matte medium. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do with those two ingredients in just a second. And it's something I've never done before. So you're experimenting with me. But you know, that's why I am doing this still life in my art journal. So that I can experiment. Now, <laughs> I, uh, I have to be honest, of course. Otherwise, there's no point. But. When I settle in to do the next one of these on a larger substrate, first of all, let me know in the comments if you're interested in seeing that process, or maybe you just want to see the finished one. Walk, you're not going to hurt my feelings either way. Just let me know. 
But I am absolutely, before I take down my little still life setup, which in the first video I, I show you that, right here in my home. But uh, when I do the next one, there's going to be similarities. It's not going to be the same. Even just the variance. Now, I'm going to try to pick a substrate or, or cut a substrate that is the same proportions as this. You know, this is, you know, like maybe one and a half times the, the width to the height or whatever. I'm going to try to keep the same proportions or at least similar. I'm not going to, I'm not going to grab a square canvas while I have done this on a rectangle. I'm also not going to take a rectangle and turn it to portrait. Now, in the process I'm doing right now, that may have been what I learned was that, hey, I need to turn my, my paper. Okay. But for this one so far, I feel like I'm happy with the proportions. I'm happy with the landscape orientation rather than a portrait orientation. And I like these colors. Now, if I wasn't going to be doing this anytime soon, and that, that can happen, I will go on the back of this journal page and I'll start writing down colors, what I used. Because pretty much if I write down which tubes I used, I can come up with the mixes how I, how I mix things. Now, you know, never say always in art, the same as never say never. I'm just filling in now a few places that maybe the brush was a little dry or my hand was a little shaky and I'm just not crazy about the final result. And I'm just gonna give it a little more. And I can always come back and do that. These paints do not shift a great deal as they dry, meaning the color wet and the color dry is really quite similar. It, the, for me, the way I would grade this um, Liquitex Professional Heavy Body, when it dries, I would not call it a matte finish, but more of a satin matte finish. A matte finish, I wouldn't say it feels rough, but it's not as slick as this. But there, well, I was going to say there's no shine. There is a little bit of shine, you know, but I've got multiple lights pouring on this. Um, I don't know that it would appear as shiny if I didn't have all these lights on it. But anyway, I'm just touching these up a little bit. I have the same style paper plate palette. I haven't changed my brushes. I used this brush before. And, um, you know, same two waters to rinse my brushes. All right. I'm, I'm feeling like that looks pretty good. You know, the other thing that happens when I look at this later is I can step away. Um, meaning, get further back from it. I can prop it up on the couch and just kind of walk back and, and see what I think. I can look at it in different lights. You know, I, the, the lighting that we have so that I can do videos is quite different than everyday lighting. So I will go ahead. Oh, boy. I'm telling you, this is a Thalo Blue. They may have some other pigments in there, and that's why they've given it more names. But Thalo Blue, lots of staining. Anything with the word Thalo, and that starts with a, the letter P, P like Paul. But these Thalos... They are, they are heavily staining and they're always hard for me to get out of the brush. Okay, so got my little bit of paint, got my um, paper plate here, and I like what this has done to the overall picture of things. Now I made up a gray color and I put it on this bowl and I, I, I like it. But to me, it looks more like a wire bowl than a glass bowl. I'm just, this is not saying glass to me at all. And then when I put these two stripes on this mug, and this, this is how the glass is in the glass bowl that my the fruit is in, now it looks like, 
were you trying to match it but you missed or what happened there? So I, I want to work on that. One of the first things. So how am I going to do that? Well, first, this apple, which I like, I want to just add a little something, very little, that is that little dried up flower in the back of an apple. I'm going to go with this uh, very emerald green. I put the very in. It's just called emerald green. I'm not even going to put any on my palette. I'm just going to get a tiny bit on that brush and I'm just going to put in just that little flower thing. That's where the flower was and then it dried out. Okay, so I've got that on there. So that's going to need to dry. So let's think of another project. Okay, I like this. I have no idea what they are. They almost look like reverse carrots or something but I just I think the pattern's really really cool I want to add just a little more just a little more now this is that emerald green that I just used with yellow and I think what I may do is go ahead and get that emerald green back put some here on my palette and I'm going to make some little dots Kind of like strawberry dots. I mean, these are such fantasy vegetables, I can't even tell you. <laughs> but, again, I just, I like it. I'm okay with it, and I'm going with it. So, um, got this brush out of the water. I'm wetting this dagger brush, and I'm just going in. Now, like I said, and I stand by it, you don't want to add more than... 25% water. Well, I'm not going to go anywhere near that, but I just want this a tiny bit more fluid because I want to make little dots and I just don't know how to do that when the paint's quite that thick. So here I go with just adding some dots. Maybe it's some kind of a new organic thing from Whole Foods. <laughs> I don't know. If it looks like something to you, let me know. If this is a vegetable or a fruit that you've eaten, <laughs> who knows? Maybe it looks like a bug. I'm just putting some random dots on them. I'm just wanting to add, and, and that's kind of where I'm at in this picture. I want to add more little details. Now, when I increase my size, I will not be using these itty bitty brushes. The brushes are going to all increase exponentially in, this one doesn't have an orange top, in relation to how much I expand the size of the, of the painting. But again, I just want to have a good feel of where I'm going before I start spending all my time and my supplies and make a bigger one. This Liquitex professional, heavy, it's a heavy body in the tubes. It lasts a long time. You are looking at some expensive paints no doubt about it. And I even have bought, for instance, this. This cadmium yellow light. I got this um, clearance for $7.97 at Michael's, if you can believe that. It was $14.99. So, you know, even your higher end art supplies, you can still get on sale. You can still use coupons and Joann's and Michael's. I have their apps on my phone. They still have coupons, just not like it was where you could just count it at week after week. No, but I check it once a week. Just, just look at my app and see what the coupons are because I have no problem walking right in, grabbing a jar of gel matte medium or 
gesso, the, the staples of my career, my art career, and just not even looking at anything else. And I'll tell you, I'm no different than anyone. Sure, I look at stuff, but I keep myself to all the clearance. Now, at Hobby Lobby, and I know a lot of people don't like Hobby Lobby, and, you know, it's okay. But Hobby Lobby usually has a pretty big clearance section all in one pile. The Michaels here where I live, they tend now to have clearance items of like products in each aisle. So like if you're looking at the Liquitex paints, then there'll be a row of all the Liquitex colors that are on sale or on clearance. The sales will be clearly marked, but then there'll be the clearance ones. So that's how I get a lot of my products. I watch for sales. I watch for coupons. And Liquitex does have what I call its fashion colors, colors that come and go. Now, if you buy this uh, heavy body cadmium yellow light, and then in 10 years, you buy another tube, they're going to be identical. That is the beauty of these products, these lifelong products that are out there. You do not have to get a lot number or anything like that. Thalo blue is Thalo blue is Thalo blue from tube to tube to tube. And I don't care if you buy one in Washington State and you buy the next one in Washington, D.C. It's the same. That's been my experience. Okay. Now, I like the little dots very much. I have a feeling that guy, he's dry enough. So, and I think my little blue dots, yeah, they're dry. So I wanted to put this here. All right, so Liquitex Professional Gesso. It is quite opaque, but it is not as opaque as the tube of titanium white. And it's also thinner. It pours. I'm just going to pour a little bit of this on my plate. That was two drops, literally, two drops. And I did give it a shake. This is Liquitex Professional Matte Medium. Unlike the gel that you've seen me use, this is liquid. And I'm going to put a couple of drops of this in. Why? Because this dries clear. The white of the gesso is going to be just a little bit more opaque. But now with this mix, I'm hoping to create more of a clear than a white. And it's just an experiment. <laughs> and we're going to see what it does. But I'm, I want it to be I'm just knocking a little bit of this off of my brush. I want it to be, to look like glass. Okay, so let's see where we go with this. And I am not going to go over the whole bowl, but almost. I'm just going to leave a few shine areas or more clear areas here and there. So now... What is this going to dry out to be? Uh, to, truly, I can't tell you. <laughs> no idea. But, and I have I ever done glass this way? No, never. But I'm giving it a try. Now, I will tell you, I have in sky, when I'm doing skylines of cities, I have used just plain um, the Liquitex basic gesso. And I've used it in uh, as the as the windows of skyscrapers. I have done that. Okay, now this looks to me like a hole in the wall. It doesn't look like a window. So again, I'm going to use this same concoction, and I'm going to see if I can create glass. And it's an experiment. I'm not pretending anything else. And we're just going to have to see 
how it looks. And I've, I'm using, I would say, two parts of the gel medium to one part of the gesso. So, because I, I can always put another coat on. But to take it off, it's going to be pretty hard. So I'm just going to see what that's going to do. Now, what else? Well, the grapes. I need to work on the grapes. The mug and the candle holders look completely flat to me. So again, I'm going to use the same mixture. I'm going into that plate and I'm going to see a little too much. I'm going to see if I can kind of highlight this and create a little bit of shape so it's not quite so flat. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. I don't know. Now I'm keeping this more on the window side of these little highlights than I am on the curtain side. Okay, now this one is like almost all the way in the window. So I'm gonna, oh, well, I didn't mean to be that generous, but that's okay. What do you think? For those of you, and I'm so grateful that you're here. For those of you that were watching my, uh, some art journaling and some collaging, and we did, I, I mentioned the journaling by fives. I did contact uh, Shannon Green, who is the inventor of that. And she got right back to me and said, absolutely, I can do the video. So I will be getting the supplies together and working on that. But if you are interested in following that, you might want to consider between now and, and then picking up from the Dollar Tree. That's, you know, I don't know, or whatever kind of a dollar store you have. One of those composition books, because that's what she used and I think it's it's a good way to start and you're not investing a lot and you're gonna you're gonna feel comfortable, you know, just using it and not being afraid. And it'll I just think I think you'll enjoy the process if you if you know if you do that. So just, just something to think about. Okay. The mug. I'm gonna give it some light. Because I felt like the mug was really quite, quite flat. So I'm putting this mixture. So the bowl, it's pretty much dry. I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference. I'm going to give it another coat. I'm gonna, I haven't changed the formula. But I'm just going to give it a little bit more. Not everywhere just here and there. Okay. Oh boy. There we go. Okay. Okay. I'm liking this very, very much. It's it's coming along fine. I think I'm just going to add just a touch more on the window. Just in places. Not. I'm not putting a whole nother coat. 
but it does feel like glass to me now, at least more than it did. Yeah, I like that. Let me know in the comments, and while you're in the comments, please consider the like button, like and subscribe if you like my content. I'd appreciate it. I'm a, a new creator, and I need to get 4,000 watch hours, and I need to get 1,000 subscribers. So those are my goals. And believe me, when we hit one of those goals, one of the two, we're going to have a nice big giveaway because I'll be celebrating. All right, I'm going to take the same mixture again, and I'm going to do these drapes here and there just to put some light in. I don't think it's going to be a huge statement. But I am going a little bit more at the window because I feel like that would be more light. And not so much back here. Okay. So what next? Well, the fruit. Like I said, this is this is the smaller details of things. The fruit looks very flat to me. So, I have that emerald green. I'm rinsing out my brush. I've got my emerald green. And I'm going to go in right here. And I'm going to see... Oh, I got a drop on the picture. That's okay. Let's wipe it off. Okay, I'm going to see what I can do to kind of bump up some shading on this pair. Now the this pair is, you know, getting some window light. So I'm trying to keep that in mind. And then I got an apple down here. I may need to add a little more of the that white going on. Just not sure how I feel about the whole whiteness yet. I'm going to add, there's an apple back there, a green apple. I'm going to just touch, I'm just touching that blue and adding it in to some of this green. And I'm going to see what I can do about shading it in a little bit. It didn't really make a whole lot of difference, but we're going with it. Okay, I think I'm happier with the fruit. I think it could even be a little darker here and there. And I'm going to add a stem to it in a bit. Okay, okay. Now, the grapes. The grapes. Now, I'm not done with my acrylic painting at all. I'm getting very crowded though, so I'm just going to set these two big jugs of gesso and medium and get those out of my way. Okay, so the grapes. All right, I am grabbing, here's where the mixed media comes in, a jelly roll pen. Now again, when I do this in a larger size, I am not going to be using a jelly roll pen. I'm going to be using a finer brush. But this is so fine that there's no way that I could put some highlights on these grapes with a brush. And I'm not going to highlight all of them. But I'm just going to add some roundness and some light. Now you might think, well... Julie, I've seen you use Pascas. Why don't you use uh, Pasca instead of brushes on the rest? Because a Pasca 
marker, and if you don't know what that is, this is a Pasca, and this is also acrylic paint. But if I would be doing that like along the edges of the candle holders or along the glass, it would look so magic marker-like. Not a fault of the product. Please don't think that. It's just because of the delivery system. It's just so precision and precise. And I just don't think it, I, I think it would stand out in a very odd way. So I want brush strokes. But again, this, these grapes are just so small. I mean, these lines are smaller than these little boxes that I put in. So and I'm just going to add a few dots here and there of shine. Okay. I'm, I'm liking that. I think that's fine. And now I think the grapes, well, they need to dry. Um, the grapes and the pear are going to get a stem. Now, this is going to be one of those, do I have anything? Because I would hate to have to mix up a brown. What can I use? I don't want to use black. What do I have on my palette? Okay, I have green and I have blue. If I add just a touch of orange... Well, this isn't really orange. What am I saying? This is cadmium red light. So that's, to me, looks orange. <laughs> but it's not. It's if, if anything, it's a red orange. It's not like a pumpkin. So take some of that. Mix it with the green. Well, right there is a pretty darn good brown. And see, these are not paints that have multiple pigments. They do not have extenders. They do not have uh, optical brighteners. And so you do get cleaner mixes. You really do. But I mean, I think this is a very decent brown. So let's put a stem in this pair. And then I wanna add, and I, I think I'm gonna change brushes. I want to add to the grapes um, a little bit of like the wood. Do you know what I mean? The, the, this little stems or the little branches or whatever those are called. Just a little. Here and there, here and there. And maybe someone even took a few of these grapes off on the edges. When they walked by, they grabbed a grape. Hope so. Healthy. That's why we put it in a fruit bowl and not have it always in the refrigerator, right? If you want your kids to eat fruit, make it handy. Or your husband. Okay. I like that very, very much. I'm going to add a little brown tip to the lemon. That gives it some personality. Okay. Well, you know what? I like this. I may work on it some more, but it's going to be some fine tweaking. If, if anything, I, I may even just save that for the next round. I like this. I'm signing it. What do you think? I bet you're thinking, oh, thank heavens. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me. Please consider liking, subscribing. It helps my channel so much. Leave me a comment. Um, I will let you know about the journaling by fives. Get yourself one of those composition books there. Oh, I would say they're about maybe eight by 10 ish and um, or maybe kind of just regular 
standard paper size and they're black and white dotty. If you don't know what they are, ask because you don't see them that much anymore being used, but they're there. Composition notebook and we'll do the journaling by fives very soon. And let me know if you want to see this next project. Maybe you just want to see it finished or maybe you want to see the process. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.